being like uh, a deck in the metagame the way it is on ladder. Like on ladder, it's really powerful, right? No one's going to deny it's super good um, to try and crush and the stats kind of back it up. But at the same time, in tournament environment, people know how to open deck lists. They kind of anticipate Paladin being part of the lineup. I, I feel like it just loses a little bit too much. Which is interesting because I feel like that's been a regular occurrence with Paladin when you're not playing a combo variant of it. It does yeah. seem to be a, a, a class that hasn't really succeeded well in Conquest tournaments in quite some time. That when you're not playing um, like an OTK Shervala deck. One day. One day. Maybe, maybe someday soon. We'll see some. Well, today won't be that day, but we shall... Going to game number one here. Looks like we're finally ready. Bloody face, full mulligans. Kill all day. Holds on to the guardian animals and the overgrowth. Doesn't really need much more here. Yep. Looking at the uh, beast package from killing all day. Uh, he is playing Malgo Shoot, obviously, so he's only playing four beasts, but he is running double Twilight Runner, one Teacher's Pet, one Lake Thresher. We've seen most of the Malgo Shoots this weekend actually play just double Teacher's Pet, double uh, Twilight Runner, but. I feel that the Leg Thresher is just so good. Even just the threat of it forces your opponent to have to think about their turns differently um, and can can punish uh, players for, you know, not thinking about uh, positioning whatever they are playing into a potential Guardian Animal's turn. Uh, wow, okay. Both players just kind of whipping some cards out here. Killing all day going with the <laughs> uh, Lightning Bloom oh, plus uh, Overgrowth next turn. Oh, wow. Okay. This is... Bladestorm check, I suppose. Yeah. Like, the idea is, do you have the ability to deal with this or not? And Buddy Face... I mean, it's not really an ideal scenario for him at all. Because he was not really prepared for this quick, right? Like, the double lightning boom play in back-to-back -back turns. To make matters worse, Killing All Day has the Guardian Animals on 7. Uh, there's not many words to say, TJ, outside of woof. Because <laughs> this is looking real bad. Yeah, okay. Equip French Caliber and hit him. Cool. About the best he can do, but Killing All Day... Ooh. All right. Uh, I mean, we've seen this kind of play work out really well, right? With uh, with germination on the Twilight Runner in the mirror. Yeah, against Bomb Warrior, though, like, yeah, sure, you can take the risk against Bladestorm once, but you know, take it twice. I mean, it'll draw first and see what happens. You pick up an overgrowth, you're doing that instead. All right, nature studies. <laughs> Mm. Healing touch, All okay. right. I'm a fan of the healing touch. I think that's this is a good pickup. Uh, one of right. the ways he's so far ahead that one of the ways he can use it, lose is just by chain of bombs. This can help prevent against that by making a little right. bit of healing. Time waits for no one. Yeah, makes sense. Yeah, I'm okay with it. I'm okay with it. But germinates anyway. Cool. Saying, all right, well, you didn't have it last turn, so we'll see if you have it this turn. Um, you can only clear one? Oh, no, he can clear both. Yeah, armor up, uh, shield slam, and then, and then hit. So, all right, at least he dealt with them. And that's, I, I mean, germinate is a pretty expensive card to use like that. Not expensive in just its mana cost, but expensive in how much power and utility it provides to the deck as a whole. Yeah, but, I think that germination here is just purely to try to overwhelm the Bomb Warrior. We've seen Bomb Warrior kind of buckle under just too much tempo that um, that the opponent is able to generate. Like, they just swing, they have to swing into top minions, right? And they just kind of die, so... I can get behind it. I think it's okay. Not great, but it's okay. Yeah, well, if you think it's okay, then I think it's okay. Well, if you think that it's okay, then I think it's okay. Well, then I think that it's okay. 
Okay. Okay, so, uh, Bloody Face has the Evil Quartermaster, which could end up being um, just important to play. Uh, but looks like he wants to search for Shield Slam. He wants to search for other cards because Evil Quartermaster doesn't directly lead to anything else. I was just thinking about how getting a 2-3 on the board might just be important for him to, one, get the lackey in hand for the future turn, but two, also just to have a 2-3 to challenge a little bit. Yeah. He only draws a bomb, but that's what... Oh, he only draws <laughs> well, two he bombs. both of them! And, There's just no bombs left. Good. Yeah, I think you it's could... good for killing, because that disables Blastmaster Boom. It disables Blastmaster Boom, and also he just has an excuse to spend three mana on Healing Touch right now. If he if he wants to like if he would like end can end the turn yeah he just he, it's like okay cool you know I was, was looking for a way to spend mana anyway now I can spend mana on this healing touch and not feel too upset about it up my mana sure. utilization stat yeah that's right mana efficiency get that blowback blowback. This is a beating. I don't know. This does not look really close at all right now. And it looks like it's about to get worse. But if he still needs to find a way to deal with stuff, finds Galakron. I think, has he has he drawn all of his expensive cards? Yep. Deathwing, Galakron, Blastmaster Beam, Kronks, Dr. Krasinov. Yep. The most expensive card all he has left in his deck is them. Brawl. <sighs> well... You know, I didn't know, I didn't really see when Bloody Face chose to play Lord Keeper Polkelt, but, uh, you know, it's a really interesting choice. <laughs> it's hard for me to even, like, think what you're supposed to do. Um, right. It just looks pretty helpless. I'm not trying to necessarily just be a downer here. I definitely feel like Bloody Face still has, like, an outside chance to win this game, but it does feel like with each passing turn, that percentage chance dips by like you know, 10% or so. Yep. Well, Geppetto value here gets Alex Straza and Speaker Gidra. The Alex Straza is good. Um, he can actually just use it now, honestly. And then he has Swipe, Double Moonfire in hand with just a big board. Um, it extends into Brawl a little bit. Um, he does need to dump a card, though. But he could just dump a crystal power and then hold on to Alex Charles. It's just kind of a waste of more damage if you're planning on using Alex Charles anyway at some point. Yeah, I, I definitely can feel that. Uh, it does feel great um, to have to dump a card here necessarily, but at the same time, you're just you're so rich in resources that it doesn't necessarily mean too much here to lose that crystal power. Yeah. And Blightface stuck with so many expensive cards. Uh, might just die to straight up pressure next turn with yep. 15 on the board. And he's at 20 life. Not enough man to play Deathwing. Dracona Blacky. Okay, Vase of Worm. Finally, Teacher's okay. Bite can die. Something. And then, so he wants to take less damage. I think he might have to hope that there's no taunt from the teacher's pit here, uh, just so he can take less damage. I don't know. That one's difficult. Because if a silverback patriarch or an iron for Grizzly comes out, then like he, he essentially just doesn't have a play. Right. I mean, I guess it works both ways, right? He, no matter when it comes out, he, if it came out, then he wouldn't have a play. All right, dodges it and gets to clear off the Twilight Runner to stop the card draw. But at this point, it's the, the damage has been done. Right, that is nine plus? Yeah, that's lethal. It's just Swipe, too much. Like, fire, this wasn't fire, really competitive power. at all in this game because. Seemed like uh, Killen just had all of the goods. 
early on, you can't really stop that uh, lightning boom play, but the way you can react to it is to have removal. And he didn't really have it whatsoever. So that's going to do it for our first game of the series. And Killing All Day is going to start things off with a 1 0 lead. No. Not really how you expect Mount Ghost Druid versus Bomb Boy to go, but honestly, just insert Druid, any type of Druid versus any deck when they have a, a decent start that's unanswer unanswerable like that. It's going to be a rough time. So, um,. Bloody Face kind of just has to say, all right, well, you got me. Let's move on to the next game and, and see if I can have a better chance. Soul Demon Hunter and the Pain Warrior left remaining, killing all day. All right, well, that leads us to our next intermission to uh, give the players a little bit of a break. And uh, when we come back, we're going to have killing all day, see if he can pile on his lead and maybe take down Bloody Face and send him to an 0-3 record. Uh, you're watching Hearthstone Grandmasters. We'll be right back. Hearthstone Grandmasters is brought to you by T-Mobile. Switch today and rank up to America's largest 5G network. T-Mobile.
Welcome back, everyone, to Hearthstone Grandmasters. We're currently in the middle of our second matchup today, Killing All Day versus Bloody Face. Killen uh, was able to get off to a very quick start. And when I say quick start, I mean he was uh, lightning blooming out his overgrowth into lightning bloom, uh, play minions, and then play guardian animals afterwards. It was pretty one-sided. But the good news is that uh, he can't really do that again. So hopefully we have a little bit more of a, of a tightly contested game here. Um, I'm not sure what it is, TJ, but it feels like the first few games today have just been kind of blowouts uh, for one player over the other. Well, sometimes that happens. Sometimes it happens. It's Hearthstone. It's a it's a collectible card game. That's going to happen from time to time, but I feel like as the day goes on, we're going to have a, a little bit more competitive series. At least I hope so. Good all day is going to turn to the Soul Demon Hunter, uh, which, you know, a uh, pretty standard version of it. He is running a Horde Pillager and an Acidic Swamp Ooze. So Acidic Swamp Ooze could come in handy against the Bomb Warrior from Bloody Face, or potentially even in the Mirror matchup, the Weapon Destruction not as potent as it would be against Bomb Warrior. And uh, Bloody Face is going to turn to Control Priest. I feel like we've seen this matchup happen so many times over the past couple of days, and it just feels like it goes towards the way of the Demon Hunter more often than not. Yeah, I know what you mean. Demon Hunter no does feel pretty strong. Strength. We saw exactly that, you know, in fact, um, when we were uh, watching the previous series with Monsanto versus uh, No Hands Gamer, where Monsanto just got completely overrun by some of that damage coming out from uh, from No Hands Gamer turn after turn. It was just kind of devastating at one point, <clears throat> watching it all go down. And now we go into game number two with the Demon Hunter versus the Priest the second time around here. Killen does not have a warrior to go up against in this acidic swamp boost. It's not going to be super important. But you know what it is? It's a two mana 3 2. It's pressure. It's the ability for uh, Killen to maybe put, push a little bit of damage with that ooze instead. We'll see. Yeah, there's just a minion that Bloody Face has to respect. So we shall see. Um. Biggest thing here is uh, killing all day. Does need to find consistent like damage output. Uh, one of the what ways that priest can win is if they take control of the board and then the demon hunter has like a lull in damage. It doesn't happen often, but it can happen. And the more tech cards you put into your deck, like a city swamp, is the more uh, often that can happen. Whoa, power infusion. Okay, that. Could be good. It also just could be dead for a while. Uh, Demon Hunters, sometimes they can struggle to deal with uh, or minions, or maybe not struggle to deal with minions, but sometimes they don't respect demon uh, minions because they assume that they'll just be able to clean it up uh, hmm. later on to the game uh, when, once they have access to uh, Blade Dance, Shard Shatter Mystic. Um, but it is expensive, and it's not, it doesn't necessarily require pressure, but it does put a big main on the board that, you know, maybe it could be a Apotheosis target. Right you, I will still find you. Yeah. yeah, I mean, if he's able to stick a minion, but it does seem like Kill All Day is in the, the mode of trading and making sure that these minions don't really get to stick. And overall, it's still looking like Killen is in a really good spot early on. Uh, just by having those weapons, but as time goes on, Bloodface is going to be able to fight back. Uh, if he's able to stick a minion on the board, and get that power infusion, and then you know stick Apotheosis, which he finds Ooh -hoo -hoo. off the Cleric of Scales. I mean, that's that's a recipe for success here. Yeah, I feel like it's got to be the pick. Renew can be the pick sometimes, but Apotheosis, while Pyromancer allows you to get value from Apotheosis, even if you don't aren't attacking with the minion immediately. Because you put Apotheos on a Wild Pyromancer, and then every spell you cast after that is at least one health gained. More minions on the board, it becomes additional health gained. Does pick the Renew, though. All right. Yeah, I'm intrigued by that. I think maybe he feels like he lacks removal. Like, Apotheosis kind of does something similar to Power Infusion. Um, which is building up your board state and kind of getting ahead and... It's just it's just that Apotheos is much better at rebounding. And also, maybe he feels like he just wants some um, cheaper cards to activate the Cabal Acolyte. So, yeah, I can definitely get behind that if that's the case. We'll see. I'm going to keep track, though. 
See if that apotheosis would have been just super sick at any point in this game. I'm in results-oriented thinking mode, Dan. And there's nothing that can take me out of it. <laughs> uh, I, I expect nothing less, TJ. All right, well, Killing All Day starting to pile on the pressure, though. I mean, it, honestly, there's a realistic possibility that whatever choice he made won't matter if he can just keep picking up some, some additional burn. Because um, he has a Gladebound Adept uh, with Marl Slicer equipped. I also got a Jockey Warblades. Sure. One thing he's missing is, like, some way to kind of refill. I guess Man Defeat to print there, but I'm looking for Skull of Gul'dan. Dance, puppet. Che or some cheap cycle. Lifeface still at 30 health, though. So the Renew coming in clutch in that regard. And he's still got time to pick up Apotheosis. Maybe he's on to something. I don't know. Yeah, I guess maybe Blayface just kind of feels like the aggression from killing all day isn't really going to be able to do very much. But uh, Killen does have... This cane sticking onto the board does have ways to get it further ahead with the Glaiveband Adept. And kind of looking at the fact that uh, Kellen has more weapon charges in the hand and a couple of ways to generate cards. I'm liking it. I'm liking if uh, Kellen just kind of goes aggressive here. Okay, ends up uh, instead prioritizing generating those resources to see what else that he wants to budget his, uh, his damage for. Which I yep. think is a little bit more responsible. Also, the turn before his opponent be playing cards like Soul Mirror anyways. Yep. So it does have, like, uh, mm -hmm. Wild Pyromancer, Power Infusion, Power Wood Shield, which would be a full board clear. Oh. Also would present a pretty big wild pyromancer. A very large and in charge wild pyromancer. Right. <laughs> this this isn't your average uh, wild pyromancer. It's one that's, that's not gonna die anytime soon. Imagine putting an apotheosis on that bad boy. I know. You would never ever die at yeah. that point. Some may say it. Might even be impossible to lose. I grow impatient. I like where your head's at, Teach. Uh, I think that um, definitely kind of interesting to see how Killing All Day gets past his Wild Pyromancer. If he ever gets past his Wild Pyromancer, that is. Uh, there's a realistic chance he doesn't. Uh, Okay, so he's just going to kill it off with the Soul Shear. Okay, uh, I was just thinking about, like, does he want to acknowledge it versus not, but I know the threat of a pocket is just too high. Definitely don't want to risk it for no reason. A simple spell. Yep, a lot of damage sunk in, and maybe that's the uh, uh, reasoning for no apotheosis, because he realizes that, you know, putting a power infusion on it by itself is probably enough to get killing to sink enough damage into it, which ends up being healing in the long run. He's, he is sinking a lot of damage into Minions. I mean, that's, that's one thing. Just because he's afraid of the Apotheosis. Right. Oh, jeez, that's a lot of damage. I mean, that's... Such a beautiful five beauty. plus another eight plus another four. So, he's got a... He's got a lot of damage. He's got enough to kill but based off what he sees. But Blightface actually has a lot of tricks up his sleeve. That of Madame Lazul is really interesting to me because maybe Bloody Face has an opportunity to, st uh, to use a Draki Warblade right back and Lifesteal as well. Hmm. All food for thought right now. Yes. It's just he doesn't have a as much of a way to capitalize on it, but honestly, every bit can matter at a certain point against Soul Demon Hunter. Especially since they're trying to count damage, and if you interrupt that at, at any point, it's beneficial. Oh, wow. <laughs> Horde Pillager. Uh, Bloodyface still at 22, though. Still a long way to go, but 8 damage from the Twin Slices, 12 with Blade Bond Adapt, has more swings with Aldraki Warblades, potentially mm -hmm. even the Marl Slicer with Horde Pillager. If he wants to get all the weapon swings out, maybe it's beneficial to just play Horde Pillager here first, because that's like efficient damage if he thinks that he doesn't have 
five more turns worth of weapon swings, you know? It's true. It is pretty clear that he's not winning the board back, so he might end up needing to do something like that instead. What more can I ask for? Don't mind. <laughs> All right, here we go. Damage time. Sinking Ooh. it in. Going downstairs. Yeah, I mean, that's just uh, just a lot of damage. Yep. And that's exactly what you really want to do as Demon Hunter. No need to complicate it. Try to pressure your opponent when you have so many tin slices, weapon swings, and glaive adept. You ship it. Ship it. So next turn he has... 15? Right? I believe so. Mam Lazul sees the War Blades, which I think might be important. He also knows about the Glade Band Death and the Twin Slice, as ah, opposed so to the Second Slice. Yeah. Valuable information there. So now he knows the entire hand, actually, right? Yeah, he does. Because he knows the second slice is there. I mean, that's a big heal, though. You just took out the Lapidary's effect. He's at 24. Oh, I mean, man. he does not... Killing well, all day, he's still... Like, Killer Day might actually have more resources than Bloody Face in the long run. Uh, sorry, yeah, yeah. If he's able to, like, utilize these things I to trade into the patient. minions. Like, if he starts yeah, using his weapon to protect sociologists, maybe that's the way he gets there. Also, just five soul fragments in the deck is a lot. Right. And he's fine trading down because he wants every bit of face damage that he can get. There's no assurance that his uh, his minions are going to stick, so you might as well just cash them in for min value and get the, the, the base damage that he, that he can. And Reaver, Cobalt Spoken again. That has the... can get him Renew. Get him Radiance. Anything that just keeps him above certain level threshold. That's what he wants right now. Because obviously he's had the board for... <laughs> Pretty much the entire game. Right. This feels like Control Warrior just trying to armor out of the burn range of uh, Freeze Mage. <clears throat> yep. And starting to run a little bit low on burn in the ha in the deck from Miller. Right. Impatient. Not too much because one of those twin slices did come from the Wand Maker, but he has one twin slice. He has. One Marl Slicer, one Soul Shard, one Glaive Mound. But those things are going to come like one at a time. This like the, he needs a skull to kind of reload a good chunk at once. And then hope that that's enough to get there. Right. And I mean, Killen's basically saying that if you got Soul Mirror and removal, I'm out of minions, and Blightface has it. And he's got development. He could also go one step further and choose not to Soul Mirror and just remove and develop here. And say, I want to hold on to Soul Mirror for like a better option, but I feel like there's not many minions left that you'd want to use Soul Mirror on. Yeah, might as well get value out of it while you can. I mean, that's just ultimate victory here. It doesn't seem like oh, there's much that his dance. opponent can really be doing. <sighs> Needs skull or so I got both skulls in deck. He needs that or like wand maker into double jump for <laughs> the skull. <laughs> oh, sure. radiance again. Yeah. Oh, and he gets twin slice. All right. I mean, that's big heal. <laughs> He's got Outdraggy Warblades. What the heck? Uh, uh, I mean, Bloodyface is now becoming the Demon Hunter. All right. 
mean, it's still a size amount of damage. If Blayface didn't just have Reno Jackson, the spell, in his hand, then uh, Blayface would be in a lot more trouble. Look at him just rip Ray's dead. <laughs> so confident. Care. Oh, yeah. man. He's like, this doesn't matter. You don't pick the He's one. just that confident in his opening hand, which uh, I can get behind. Yep. Goes back up to 20. As, what, eight more healing next turn if you count the, heal, the, the hero power? They're just so much going for him. And Spirit Jailer off the top. That looks like a... <laughs> We're we're getting close to a a big old fat concede here. I grow Unless Skull is probably the next pickup, I just don't think Killen has a uh, bunch of a chance in this game. Yeah, it doesn't seem like Killen can really get enough damage, even if he was able to command his deck to give him Skull or Goldan next turn. Uh, I think it's completely lost at this point. Blayface has won the tempo. He stalled enough damage. He's healed for <laughs> some ungodly amount. Uh, is Alex is... actually aggro next turn? Actually, I think with the combination of Alex Straza, the twin slices, and inner fire, I think that's lethal. <laughs> he just kills him. <laughs> he has that's an OTK. third Cobalt Spellkin played this game. That's kind of insane. Right, he Alex is down at 15, he inner fires, and he hits for 10, and then he's got four more damage plus a weapon for 16. <laughs> yep. He's about to wound, he can't kill it all day. <laughs> From 30. <laughs> oh, jeez. Killing is mildly amused. Yeah, I mean, yeah, this is fancy and, and fun, but uh, I mean, he was not winning this game. <laughs> Guess not. Uh, Blayface is going to take game number two, tie it up. And we talked about how Demon Hunter is good in the matchup against Priest, but, uh, you know, it does feel like the lack of consistent damage and also the crazy amount of healing that uh, Blayface was able to generate ended up being the, the real key of that matchup, right? Like, you look at how Blayface was approaching it, just saying, like, I'm going to go for a starvation strategy. Uh, make sure that killing all day loses all the resources. If I just have one or two minions, that's good enough for me, and I'm able to outpace their damage through healing myself and prioritize healing. Um, yeah. And it turns out he really didn't need that apotheosis off the uh, the cleric of scales. So uh, good on Bladeface to kind of recognize what's really important in the matchup and forcing killing all day to to be afraid with that power infusion on that uh, wild pyromancer. Yeah, it's like a ton of damage into it, um, which uh, ends up being effective healing in the long run anyway. So. Um, nice little win there, ties up the series, and I think a bunch needed win with Priest. Um, so now it's it's down to Demon Hunter and Warrior on both sides. Uh, it's solo Demon Hunter, but the Warrior is a different archetype for both players. Blayface having Bomb Warrior, uh, and Killing All Day having uh, Pain Warrior. It does seem the matchup has been going in favor of Pain Warrior. I even like Killin's uh, version like even slightly better than what we saw from uh, No Hands earlier on because he does have Serpent Egg plus Terran Scorpion which gives him a little bit of extra oomph. Uh, he does cut weapons which can cut down on some of like maybe the X Factor of the deck, a little bit more chip damage but um, like having you know one less Corsair Cache, just Anchor, just Live Bar Lance I, I think is it's, not, it's a nice lean uh, lean version of the deck that still functions the same as any other pain warrior, just gives it more minion pressure. Yeah, totally. I, I think that that pressure is really valuable as well. So, I'm definitely a big fan of it myself. As we shall see what ends up happening in this game, going to game number three. Blade Fate turning to a soul demon hunter with the Mactheridon deck list. Uh, I believe that it ends up helping in a lot more matchups. Um, no. Kind of sad to see it cut, just because I think it was a, such a cool card to see in a yeah. lot of Demon Hunter lists. Uh, just because I thought, like, when Magtheridon was first revealed, people were like, well, is this just like a meme card, right? Like, you're not actually supposed to play this card very often, and if you do, you're supposed to, like, upload YouTube highlights for it. But it's, it's <laughs> That's what legit. you're supposed to do. 
That's what its uh, original design intention was. <laughs> you, you That's what it pilots. feels like. Yeah. I, I know it's not the case all the time, but it certainly does feel like it at, at, at certain moments. Yeah, uh, that's fair. Definitely fair. But uh, one of the tough parts about this matchup is uh, Pain Warrior. A lot of, lot of life gain and like such a has the potential for an insane amount of tempo. So a lot of times you you have to have you have to be like thinking about two different things. You have to be counting damage and accounting for how much life they're going to be able to gain with Mercy Skipper, Armor Smith, Blood Sword, Mercenaries. But you also have to worry about just dying from the amount of pressure that uh, Pain Warrior can put out. Um, especially if you just leave like one minion on the board, like a Warmaw Challenger that comes out early on in the game, you know, that can snowball. That could get Shield of Honored and Bloodsworn Mercenary, and then all of a sudden you have these two massive minions that are just, you know, uh, uh, too difficult for you to deal with. So, we'll see. It also means that the Warrior kind of has. Maybe not two win conditions, but it allows them some wiggle room where they could use Bloodsworn Mercenary for full tempo, or they can use it for like these massive life gain swings with the Resistance for Armor. Uh, so I really like this matchup for for the Pain Warrior. I think it's uh, tough for uh, Soul Demon Hunter to deal enough damage quickly enough to outpace what uh, Pain Warrior can do. All right. Well, we'll see if the Pain Warrior with those uh, big combos you talked about end up. Being the key early here for killing, he does have the Risky Skipper and the Bomb Wrangler here. I really like this. This is a turn four play in a lot of the scenarios because you wipe the clean, you wipe the board clean, present enough threats, start to improve the power of Blood Roll Brute, or maybe perhaps Battle Rage off the top, and you already have another one in your hand. So I think it's okay yeah. to extend this way. Uh, take the initiative. Don't let the Demon Hunter really get their footing. Bloody face, not afraid. Oh. Plays Mactheridon. Whoa. Oh. Wait. Terran Gorfine gets pulled off the top, TJ. Whoa. I was going to say, Mactheridon's you... the X Factor because what the one thing that this Warrior deck lacks is straight up hard removal uh, outside of Lord Barov and maybe something you get from like a Therial Lackey, but that's not reliable. Um, right. And so Mactheridon comes out, but Terran Gorfine, so it'll kill off. All the one wardens and summons Magtheridon. <laughs> and summons Magtheridon, which will then destroy everything, which includes Terran Gorefiend. Which will summon which, back the enemy warden. Which will summons That's back hard. the board, but there's a 12 12 there now. <laughs> oh, it's so funny. <laughs> oh, only one damage off the board. I must shoot. Um. <laughs> Okay. Okay. He's just gonna buff him. To okay. This is, this is uh, this is the the other way to do it is just by buffing up the the warders and making it so they're harder to kill, uh, with just like a shard chatter mystic. Um, but this seems like the, uh, I think Bloody Face has a way to deal with it all anyway. Yeah, he does. Shard chatter right. mystic, mystic, uh, twin slants, blade dance. Oh yeah, no! It does. I mean, he has to use a coin if he Demon wants to. Um, oh yeah, no. If he wants to go yeah. for the full clear. Yeah, 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 yeah. So somehow I was like, oh, he's one mana short, even with the coin. But no, he's not. Um, so I, th I feel the Terran just seems sick. Is does it not work the way we're thinking? Because it would kill off all the warders. It would send him back Derridon. Mac Derridon would then die. And then, or would then uh, no, kill no, everything, Darren, and Terran would then die, and then summon back all the stuff right. that he killed off. Board and you have stats. a twelve, twelve, but then you have like this huge amount of just raw stats on board. I don't know. That one's tough. I, I understand I, he needed like a very, he needed like almost exactly that specific combination of cards in order to clear everything off. But I feel like uh, no. getting the Mactheridon out of the way means that you you don't have to worry about extending onto a board for the rest of the game. Because with Mactheridon being dormant like that and you still having the warders on the board, you don't want to extend too far because then at any point your warders could die and then it's, it ruins all the tempo. 
Oh, we'll see. I mean, now there's still a 12 12 in play. Bloody Face is quite low on life total, but I, I mean, he's only a, at this point a few damage points short of killing him, it feels, because Gillen's at effectively 11. He's got Marl Slicer, Second Slice, and Gladebound Adept over the next two turns. Demons? I mean. It's looking, it's looking a little hard to stop Bloody Face's damage. When Mactherodon gets to connect, you generally win the game. But Bloody Face also is at 13. True. So he's really hoping Killen does not have additional damage on the board, and it turns out Killen, or in the hand rather, it turns out Killen does not have any guarantee kill here. Whoa. Oh, oof. Um, is there a the Risky Skipper, skipper Bomb route. Wrangler? No. Um, I think if he, like, let's say he plays, like, Risky Skipper after he cracks the Terran Gorfine, he's going to have enough to kill, play the Blood Boiler Brute in Hero Power. Yeah, but uh, the issue is he doesn't have enough life if Blighty's has any damage to him. Yeah, so this is a great play. I must choose. Drink your blood. Drink your blood. Right, like he's gonna be able to deal with uh, the board, push damage. Yep, but hoping that a Soul Demon Hunter has. Not a single point of damage in hand. Uh, a little too hopeful, it feels, a lot of the time. And the power of Magtheridon showing through right there. And that was close, though. Like, if, if Playface didn't have, like, almost exactly that, or he could have had, like, Shard Shatter Mystic into coin Shard Shatter Mystic, right? Because he stole two Soul Fragments in the deck. So there was a couple of, like, a combination of cards that allowed him to kill, push through both warders with with that type of game plan. Um, that's a, tough to call. Tough to call. It's a it's kind of a difficult situation to to be in if you're killing all day. Like there and on, it does. Yeah. I mean, that's those are some highlights right there. Those provide highlights. Yeah, I agree. I think that uh, it was probably like killing all day, just thinking about the optimistic line, but um, you know. We talked about what it means to pressure Demon Hunter and like make sure that if you're in a race scenario, you have that damage. And he just didn't have damage, right? So if he's initiating, like pushing face, and it gets called out, and Bloody Face, like, I actually do have a way to summon back there. Uh, this enraged deck does have weaknesses. He doesn't deal yeah. single target removal, and he didn't have the ability to race. So it's like, you know, he wasn't truly prepared for that kind of scenario from Bloody Face. It's true. Well, moving on to game three or game four here. Sorry, um, bomb warrior only deck remaining left for bloody face, and it will be against the pain warrior. And I don't know if we've seen this matchup two or three times over the course of the past uh, this past weekend, and it's gone. Wait, the pain warrior. I think every time, it's kind of too much tempo to deal with, um, especially in the these bomb warriors that don't have like a risky skipper package of their own. It feels like they can't keep up. They take chip damage and then combo or Grom or something ends the game. Uh, but we'll see. Uh, not the greatest opening for killing all day, but can be made better by a couple of draws. Anchor does make that better. At least he can start pulling some cards from his deck. Aaron Gorfi would also be fantastic with the Serpent Anchor played on the trip, too. Does not find it, but still has Anchor. Tangorfin indeed is one of the better ways that you can be Brazilian against Warrior. Warrior is great at removing targets, but Death Rattle layers have have historically been a big problem for that class in general. Yeah. So, a question here: Does he want to shield block and cycle? <coughs> Yeah, so you want to cycle? That's, not, that's not up on me. 
yeah, or get the wrench I caliber swings. Hope you're okay, DJ. But yeah, it, the wrench caliber swings can be really important, but he doesn't have like a good building block on the following turn because if you play, if he coins out the wrench caliber, what still not playing Doctor Crass enough next turn. Uh, and what do you swing at? Do you swing at the face and maybe even activate Battle Rage for your opponent? I mean, he could even swing at the Serpent Egg and kill it. And next turn, like, Shield Block, Shield Slam, the Serpent. Okay. Like, don't let him get Terran Glorfiend value. Don't let him get Inner Rage, uh, Rampage, Shield of Honor value. Or, you know, you can just... Equip the wrench caliber and and not swing. Uh, this is like planning ahead for like, okay, how many weapon swings am I going to do this next turn? I'm going to play shield block, shield slam, or some combination thereof, and then turn after that, I'm going to play uh, Doctor Krasinov. Yep, makes sense to me. Kieloday finds the battle rage. Doesn't have that risk skipper yet, but he can just pick it up with this swing of the anchor. The charge. Does have it for the following turn if he wants to go for power plays. Finds another Rissy Skipper off the Sky Raider. Okay. Now we're cooking. Uh, I don't know how valuable the third Risky Skipper is. That might be a little bit excessive. Uh, especially in a deck that doesn't necessarily go wide with minions. Like you don't need another wave of, of removal essentially uh, to deal with, you know, something that a bomb warrior is going to do. Um, That's true. Maybe he finds the use for it. Uh, he could throw it out there for Bomb Wrangler, or one for Battle Rage, one for Bomb Wrangler, one for Armor Smith, something along those lines. This lets him plan a little bit, a little bit more, a little bit better, perhaps. Job done. He needs to clear off as much as he can as he sets up opportunities for his weapon to get maximum swings. Killing All Day finds Bomb Rankler. So if he does want to do the Risky Skipper Bomb Rankler play, he could go for it. Um, I mean, this is a pretty oh, no. nice hand in terms of the tool, the toolbox that Kill Killen has. Nothing just feels like the silver bullet, though, to play this turn. Because if he plays Risky Skipper and he plays Bomb Rankler... It's fun. not really a high power Someone's turn. It's, it's pretty average, actually. Yeah, they can just play the Battle Rage here for three. Uh oh, he actually has a full hand now. Oh, I, I miscounted. Sorry, he has nine. Oh, he's got he's nine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, forgot, he's, I forgot he's not damaged. <laughs> yeah. Oh. All right, but Dr. Krasnov coming down. I mean, this plan working out quite well for uh, for Bloody Face. <clears throat> He's not taking much much heat here. He's cycling through his deck a little bit. He's got a big weapon equipped. Um, uh, these two these turns are always kind of tough. Uh, he needs to deal with this Dr. Krasnov. He can't afford to give Bloody Face any more weapon swing. Uh, but what's the best way to do it? Uh, he could just go like Blood Boil Brute. Um, and then maybe even like rampage on one of these one ones. Uh, trade up with the blood boil brute and push five damage. Okay, but looks like he could also go for like a Terran Gorfiend. It's just on a Sky Raider, but okay, he just wants to go a little bit wider. Knife juggler. Okay. Nice. Pirate token pirate synergy. <laughs> That's cool. I mean, you're trying to be creative here. He's got Blade Storm to clean up five power on the board. Pretty much as good as Blade Storm is really going to get here. Killing five minions. I know it's not, you know, Death Wing on the opposite side. Or anything like that, right? When you're playing like Warrior of Your Warrior, you're often thinking about how you can kill like Rom or like all these other crazy things, but just uh, take the value where you can get it. All right. 
So could go for a risky skipper again, but this time throwing like armor smith with the uh, bomb wrangler, because he still has another uh, risky skipper left in his deck. But again, just gonna take it slow. I go for value. Might be looking to set up a Terran Gorfine turn again. Yep. <laughs> a lot of small but very annoying minions inside of that Terran right. Gorfine. I mean, this is just layers upon layers of just being annoying as heck. <laughs> it's it's really not m nothing really more than that. Just attempting to be disruptive. <laughs> right. I am unbreakable. I am unstoppable. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Not many things will last very long against a Wormall Challenger that got a uh, massive buff like that. That is kind of amusing. Uh, but Killing All Day does have ways to make this hurt if he wants to copy that Terran Gorfine. Kind of waiting to see if he's going to do that here. The Rampage plus the Bloodsworn Mercenary does require him to play. A little bit extra stuff, though. But the mana fits very nicely. And this is a very sturdy, sticky death rattle minion. Terran Gorfin gets copied. A lot of armor, too. Can't really understate that. And now, Bloody Face has AoE. But not only is he going to give his opponent 5 armor, he's also going to... Uh, Pop these Darren, Terran Gore fiends. And this is yeah. the kind of sticky situation we talked about that uh, the what if? that the warrior struggles to remove with. Yeah, this <laughs> this is uh, like the play I mentioned because what do you do? Like you a we this board, you give him armor and you you break open these Terran Gore fiends, which also have armor smiths. Oh, by the way, and light wells inside of them. That's that's another thing to mention. If you don't deal with this board, you're taking a ton of damage. Not really much to do, unfortunately. What time is fleeting? Like, what can you really do here? Nothing. Uh, you play your stuff and hit him in the face and hope that that works out. Killing the Armorsmith is probably priority number one. But honestly, like, it, by playing this uh, this Warmaw Challenger, uh, he, it, Killing All Day then gets the opportunity to trade in one of these Terrans and out pops an Armorsmith and a Lightwell, and then trade down, get a ton of armor, and holy moly, that's another Bloodsworn Mercenary. Um... <laughs> <sighs> now you, you have to think you can't get too ahead of yourself you have to think of what it looks like for removal but honestly this board state is just so complicated no. that if you can't think of a way to deal with it your opponent probably also can't think of a way to deal with it and bloody face has shown for a few turns in a row now that he really doesn't have uh, much aoe if any uh, to try and answer this so Yeah, it definitely seems like this is a situation where uh, Bloody Face has indicated that it doesn't have uh, any answer to all the, the stickiness of it. So Killing All Day has to just be careful not to not to overdo it, which is totally understandable. I want to throw away any possible advantage that he, that he spent his entire game building up towards. But 
I think as long as he stays the course here, this looks like killing all day's game to lose. I don't really think Buddy Face has a series of outs here. Okay, cutting class. Oh. Okay, so he could still play AoE here. Still could also just try to, like, he could play AoE, let his opponent recover, and then try to play AoE again on the following turn. It's entirely, entirely possible. So you cut in class, try and pick up Brawl or Bladestorm. And then you Kronks here, which puts... Four, five, six, seven power on board. Oh, he can actually shield slam Kronks. I guess he okay. could do this and just load up the Kronks for next turn. It loads up the same, essentially the same amount of power. Yeah. Okay. So th this is this is kind of the downside of like going in with the second Bloodsword Mercenary is like. You fill up your board, which means that you, like, if he has single target removal like this, it's a little bit easier for him to kind of pick it apart and set up for AoE. There are now six bombs in the deck. Okay, five bombs in the deck. Right. If Ken doesn't draw a single one of them, he's got... Shield of Honor, and I guess in his mind, he's just got to send this damage. See what Blightface can do. But I guess the good news is that he's on a two-turn lethal. Yeah. Not really much else to, to really say uh, about for what him. Killing All Day's game plan is. It's really about Blightface's AoE, and that War Mall Challenger... Pretty important to disable that Divine Shield and play this Kronx as AoE. Somehow, Bloodyface has defused this board situation. Swing it to Lightwell or let it live? Send it back to Killing All Day to tell the stories of what happened on this battlefield. Yeah, nope, you're winning no with survivors. Bombs. Yeah, you're winning with bombs here, so. Yeah, yeah. Also, Can't leaving up a heal. damaged minion. Probably not the best idea. And now, Kellen all day, this is the point of Pain Warrior where, you know, things just kind of get out of hand a little bit because you you have, you need multiple cards in order to generate more cards, right? Like you need Risky Skipper plus something plus Battle Rage. If you're just drawing like Battle Rage off the top, if you're just drawing like Inner Rage off the top, if you're just drawing Shield of Honor off the top, none of those things synergize like well by them or have synergy with just one thing. Um, you need multiple things. So if you're having to empty your hand, it's going to be a while before you're able to piece together something that's worthwhile. And now Killing All Day has seven bombs in his deck. And he's at 13. Almost half his deck is bombs. I feel like it's pretty likely that he dies here. Or that he dies relatively soon. Not likely that he dies here. Well yeah. He's dead. Yeah, that's it. Killing all day can see there's not enough for him to be able to do anything here. The sticky board was really well handled by Bloody Face, and Bloody Face able to win 3-1, a crucial victory for him in this round robin group stage. And overall, like I gotta say, that was a really tough corner that he navigated. Um, mm -hmm. But once he did, you also saw why Bomb Warrior tends to be the one favorited in the percentages uh, slightly, right? Because there's this window that the Enraged Warrior can really get in pressure their opponent and try to go for the kill but once they miss that it feels like unless they have combo damage to end the game from hand uh they're pretty much uh in a danger zone because their opponents are going to be drawing uh they're, they're going to be drawing cards they have battle rage and their opponents are going to be suffering in more bombs and we see this inevitability that bomb warrior has uh, when it's able to draw out the game so a uh, job well done to bloody face and uh important win as uh, we go deeper into the round robin stage uh, but that does set up for our 